In the Dean household, clean-cut uniforms hang in the closet, dog tags dangle from their chains, and portraits of the men in their family who have served in the United States military adorn the walls. Serving runs in Ryan's blood. It is a lifestyle that was instilled in him from a young age. He has seen his family go in and out of all military branches. I've always wanted to, since I was younger, just to go into the military. I just come from the family of a bunch of people in the military, whether it's Army, Navy, Coast Guard, whatever. Ryan's grandfather, Ben Guthrie, served in the United States Navy. The men who served side by side with him are still a part of his life today, 60 years later. He actually just went, he just lost one of his legs not long ago for amputation and all of his buddies that he still talks to, they all flew down to Florida and they all visited him. So like, I just, that's probably what sticks out to me the most, is just talking to my grandfather about how he was overseas and met his best friends that he's never going to be able to forget and then I know they'll never be able to forget him and that's something I wish I could have had as well. His other grandfather, Borden Dean, served in the Army. He has uncles who served in the Coast Guard and the Marines who now work as police officers. His father aimed to be a Marine, however he was unable to be recruited due to physical complications. His brother, Brandon, is in the Army National Guard. Not his actual official dog tag because he keeps those with him, but this is just one he got out there that has the Army values and the warrior ethos, which stands, I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. And then the Army values of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. Which honest, they, those are probably the greatest values someone could have. They all are doing it for the greater good, the protection of our safety for our country. And I always admired that from them, that they're risking their lives so people nowadays can just live their own lives here, whether that's loving this country or hating this country, they're protecting it regardless. And I just think there's no greater sacrifice than that. The day since I got them, I haven't taken them off. It's been two years, and it's something I've always had with me. I mean, I wear some, a bunch of his Army stuff all the time. In 2010 at Blake High School, Ryan took a step towards his dreams and met with two recruiters from the United States Marine Corps. I wanted to become a Marine right as I turned 18, would have enlisted, been active duty. I mean, in high school, I was Dean the Marine. It's just what I was. It's just everyone thought of me as that. And that's when it really hit me. It was like, I should do this. Like, I have to do this. So I talked to recruiters, and they said, physically fit, absolutely. Mentally fit, we'll do tests for that. But we can't get there without the vision test first. Ryan was born with an arteriovenous malformation, commonly known as AVM. In layman's terms, is just a bad or abnormal connection of blood vessels. He faced numerous surgeries as a child to try and control the damage the AVM was causing his body. When I was five, it really swelled up, and my dad actually said that it swelled so bad I looked like ET. Ryan was flown back and forth from Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore to specialists in Boston for a period of seven months total of nine surgeries, what they call embolizations, just for this particular AVM that kept reopening. During what would be the final surgery in a series of attempts to close the AVM, Ryan's family knew something was wrong. Hours after his surgery was supposed to be over, he was still on the table. Eventually, a doctor came out to the waiting room to inform his distressed parents of a complication that had occurred. I was under and everything. Um, I started the hemorrhage, which is just bleeding out, and it's not supposed to happen. So if they didn't do what they did, this interview would not be happening right now. They just had to cut all the blood flow right off at once to where it was bleeding from. And doing so, it ruptured the optic nerve in my right eye because the, AV, the AVM was in the right side of my brain. So ever since March of 99, I have been blind in my right eye. Ryan learned to adapt. He never felt like the loss of vision in his right eye hindered him. I've done through sports all through my life. I've just never stopped me before. Nothing's ever stopped me. And I went and did the vision test. I was like, by the way, like, I have contacts in one eye so I can see correctly. He goes, what do you mean one eye? Well, I'm blind in the other eye. He goes, oh, like, can it, can it, is it, like, corrected? Can it get up to 2040, the minimum standard? I was like, it, it can't. It is pitch black. And they go, oh, well, we'll let you know. And at that point, I'm like, that's, that's a thanks for coming out, but we can't take you. It cut deep. It really cut deep. My brother's leaving my dreams out for me, and that's, that's what really helped me through it. 
I could never be more proud of him than I already am. I can never put on a uniform and do what they do day in and day out, but I can act the same way as they do, have the respect for any and everyone, no matter how disrespectful or rude they may be. And just being that type of person that always places, um, not even a mission, just always placing others' needs before theirs. So you're a Marine without the title, without the official title? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs>